Hello, my name is Daniel and I'm a nutritional therapist. And today I'd like to discuss the importance of omega-3 fatty acids. Now when we're discussing omega-3s, we're mainly referring to ALA, EPA, and DHA. ALA found in nuts and seeds is technically the only omega-3 fatty acid that is essential as it can be converted in the body to both EPA and DHA, but it doesn't really have much use beyond that. However, that conversion process is pretty limited and varies from person to person, which is why I recommend to get EPA and DHA from fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, herring, or an algae supplement. Most studies indicate that the conversion of ALA to EPA is less than 10% and less than 1% to DHA. Now EPA and DHA are what we refer to when it comes to reductions in inflammation, supporting depression, fetal development, cardiovascular health, as well as being incorporated into our cellular membranes. The first thing I want to discuss is how omega-3s can reduce inflammation. Pro-inflammatory cells are going to have a higher proportion of the omega-6 fatty acid or arachidonic acid, which is then going to be metabolized into pro-inflammatory prostaglandins and leukotrienes by the enzymes COX and 5-lipoxygenase. But when we eat a higher amount of EPA and DHA, we can change the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 of our cellular membranes and promote a more anti-inflammatory environment. Now inflammation is necessary to a degree as it's vital to fight infection as well as for tissue repair. However, when we have this imbalance of an abundance of omega-6 and not enough omega-3 in our diet, we tend to shift towards a more pro-inflammatory state which can then lead to chronic inflammation. This can then contribute towards some of the more modern chronic diseases that are driven by inflammation, like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, asthma, eczema, as well as things like joint pain, recurrent injuries, and poor recovery from exercise. Now, an optimal ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 should be in the region of two to four to one, whereas Western diets high in omega-6 foods like soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, and safflower oil can be as high as 20 to 1. If chronic inflammation is suspected, I sometimes recommend a fatty acid profile test. What this test will tell us is the fatty acid composition of our cell membranes. This can provide a good baseline and give you some insight into your omega-6 to 3 ratio. Next, I'd like to discuss how omega-3 fatty acids can support mental health. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential for the optimum functioning of our brain as they are an integral component of our neuronal membranes. There is also emerging evidence which links chronic inflammation with depression, where we see an elevation of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And as discussed earlier, omega-3 fatty acids are very useful for encouraging an appropriate inflammatory response. This meta-analysis of 10 clinical trials evaluated the effects of omega-3 fatty acids on depressive symptoms. We can see that omega-3 supplementation demonstrated an antidepressant effect. Omega-3 fatty acids can also help to manage asthma. Asthma can be described as chronic inflammation of the airways, which leads to a narrowing of the bronchial tubules. And since omega-3s have shown the ability to regulate inflammation, there is also the potential for it to support asthma sufferers. As we can see from this graph, the subjects with the higher intakes of omega-3 fatty acids had lower incidence of asthma cases. We can also see from this study that mothers with a higher omega-3 concentration in their breast milk had a reduced risk for their children developing asthma in childhood. Omega-3 fatty acids have also been shown to help subjects with metabolic syndrome, reducing their risk of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. This study measured the impact of omega-3 supplementation on markers of metabolic syndrome. They found that the omega-3 group demonstrated a significant reduction in body weight, systolic blood pressure, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, total cholesterol, triglycerides, high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, and HSP27 antibody titers. As you can see, there is plenty of evidence on why you should be getting enough omega-3 fatty acids in your diet. I always feel it's best to get omega-3s through your diet from fatty fish, but supplementation is always an option from either fish oil or algae oil. Well, that's it for me. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe or follow, and I'll see you next time.